So I have another question and I was already so excited to ask about um, the idea of a political home and then you brought it up during the workshop. Um, and so I just am wondering how you're able to maintain a political home in song and like break isolation under COVID. Like how has that changed? You know, I mean, the truth, I would say the work of song is a labor of love. Like just the same way that you have to love the home that you have, you know, and invest in it and care for it. And there's some parts of that that you really enjoy doing and some parts of that to, that you really don't, you know, but you, you give to it because you love it. That's the same as what it means to care for the work of song, you know? Like, I, it's a contradiction to be a political home, you know? Like political, like politics does not mean elections and certainly not two parties, you know? It, it means how power is arranged in our systems and institutions. And so it's like innately a power struggle. <laughs> and so to have a political home <laughs> has, is, a, is a rub and we're a really big tent, you know? And we are a place of belonging for people who have identities that are very um, multi, like complex, you know? And so, and ac across identities where there are divides, you know? And I can remember, the way I think about it is something I learned from Mab Segrist, who's one of the co-founders. She was one of the white women who co-founded Song. And um, at the time, she wrote a book called Confessions of a Race Trader. And when I met her, I remember being like, really like, oh, Mab Seagrass, you know, anti-racist white woman. And we're gonna work together on the board and I'm gonna learn so much about what it means to be anti-racist. And the first experience I had, I honestly can't remember what she said, but I was like, oh Lord, Mab is racist. <laughs> and, and I told her, you racist. And she was like, you know, and she was, she listened. Like, I don't remember what happened before. I remember her response. Her response was that she listened to what I said and she, um, and I watched her come again. You see what I'm saying? And I've been watching her do that. That was like sometime in the nineties. And I've been watching her do that over and over and over and over and over again. So what it means to me to be in a political home and to maintain song as a political home is to continue to transform in service of what is required to be a place of belonging for such a big tent. And how you do that is you, you say, is, is you, like I used to think, well, we have these values and these principles and our work is to stay on principle. But now after having worked at Song, I've learned so far that actually we should not assume we're on, we're in alignment with our values. We should actually assume that our work is to return again and again to centering the values irregardless of where we're at or what's what's happening you see what i'm saying so that way of mabs of not trying to pretend that what i said was true and that that erased or that that erased her commitment to being anti-racist, like that 
it's a practice of returning again and again to center in practice of the values. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's different from, like I think I thought at the time when I said that to her, that that was what it meant to challenge white supremacy. And it's not that that's not challenging. It's not that I didn't challenge her, but then it was really the challenge came from figuring out how to work with her for the next 20 some years. Do you understand what I'm saying? Figuring out how to, how to, how do we work together? You know, like how do we be in disagreement and discover what the next most elegant move is? You, you, I don't know if I make, cause that's really different than what I thought it was, you know, and how I think a lot of people approach. Like it's not mm -hmm. about actually trying to be right 